Hey, welcome to uh, part two of the Sacred Warrior edition of Joe's Record Store, Christian Rock and Metal. And uh, I just talked about the uh, first two albums. Well, you know, later over time, you know, after, you know, one, one trip to the Christian bookstore after another, I ended up, you know, having a bigger and bigger and bigger collection, um, which is ridiculously huge now. Well, uh, this one uh, came out in 91. I got it when it was uh, pretty much hot off the press. This is, um, it was like by their third album, they, they were really improving. I think they were, you know, they probably were more comfortable and relaxed, ready in the studio. Um, when they recorded this album, they were actually on the verge of breaking up because so there was, uh, you know, some disaster in their previous tour. I think they ran out of money in one or two instances, and uh, but uh, you know, I think uh, when they were thinking about calling it quits, they rolled in and uh, they had such a big reception at, at one of their last gigs on on the road. Uh, and you know, brought them back on their feet and encouraged them. They went back and recorded this one, "Wicked Generation." It's basically uh, the theme was, uh, yeah, "Wicked Generation," about uh, you know the you know the wickedness of mankind, the mercy, you know, Christ's mercy through you know through you know despite the evils of the world. Uh, really good songs. Uh, I mean, it's definitely an improvement from the first two. It's, you know, they got better every album. And, uh, again, it's just really straightforward, you know, uh, melodic heavy metal. It's obvious, you know, the guy that recorded them knew what he was doing. He, um, I mean, just uh, it, everything you'd want in a good melodic metal album, I mean, this this really delivered the goods. This is their fourth one and their last, their last one, Obsessions. Um, a lot of people said they didn't like this album, but actually, I loved it. I mean, I think I really think that that this was their best one. I mean, I have people that disagree with me that you know they think this is the best or you know, one of these two are the best, but I mean, I really was impressed when this one came out. Um, and uh, and when this came out in. Uh, Oh, excuse me, I said 91. No, this came out in 1990, I'm sorry. This one came out in 91. And it's a really good album, even though, you know, the glory days of metal were, were you know, pretty much uh, close to being over. And, you know, grunge was on the horizon, and the whole Seattle thing, an alternative thing, was, was starting to take over the, as far as, you know, the rock music scene in, in, in general, and... You know the whole uh, you know metal metal mania as we knew it was co were coming to a close. I mean they definitely delivered the goods on this one. Great musicianship. I love most of the songs on it. You know some more than others. Uh, I mean definitely you know deadly obsessions. I mean that is kind of like you know everything I'd expect. You know the best of loudness, Queensrÿche, you know Fifth Angel. Um, a little bit of docking thrown in for good mix and I mean just all in all just a good you know unshamed unashamed unabashed melodic metal album and and that's uh definitely you know if you if you love the melodic power metal Sacred Warrior definitely delivered and uh, Ray Perra is one of my Facebook friends so I'm gonna post these on his wall and because I love letting the artists know you know what you know what their music means to me I know it sounds kind of sappy you know like a sappy fanboy thing to do but I love you know letting the artists know what uh, you know how much their music means in my life and uh, anyway and of course Sacred Warrior was disbanded I believe when this came out in 93 and uh, basically Intense Records were putting out the the collection that was the label they were on Intense Records um, 
Now they were putting the, the Vengeance Collection, the Deliverance Collection, the So and So Collection, you know, and they had the Sacred Warrior Collection. They just bit, bit off, you know, tracks from the previous four, put them together, and I, I just, I bought it out of the cutout bin, and mainly I got it just for the sake of collecting it. You know, like yeah, I gave it a few runs in the car to play music critic, and then you know I, I put it in the rack with everything else, and. Uh, I'm hoping eventually that, you know, I will get all the albums on CD, but, you know, being a collector can be quite a drain on the wallet, and, uh, again, this is the only Sacred Warrior I have on CD at all, and, uh, this was, uh, during the 2000, summer of 2001, Cornerstone was doing Retro Metal, metal Night, because in the early 2000s, or after the whole alternative excitement, and you know the whole swing boom was over, and you know grunge was pretty much dead and gone, um, there was a resurgence of metal and, and interest in the old guard of, of metal. So uh, Cornerstone sponsored this concert called uh, called uh, you know Live at Cornerstone 2001 80s Metro Retro Metal Night. And uh, this is a series within itself I'm actually trying to collect. So far I got Bride, Guardian, Recon, Deliverance, and um, I know there's a DVD out, but which I hope to hunt that down, you know, sometime in the near future. Who knows, but uh, again, you know, collecting, it's like there's so much music I want and so little money to get it all. <laughs> but... Um, I believe I got this uh, discounted from Rad Rockers, like a lot of other stuff. Um, again, of course, you know they have the intro, preaching. Basically, it's it's the what's what of what was on their on their four albums. Um, and they they definitely pulled off a great live show. I mean, I never had the chance to see a Sacred Warrior show, but uh, I mean, if they were anywhere near the area, I might be I'm at, or, or or maybe if they are, you know, if they do get together for a show and I happen to be nearby, I'd definitely jump on board. But um, I mean, as far as like you know the 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 history of Christian metal as we know it, I mean. The Sacred Warriors definitely had a hand in it, and and they were never uh, and they were bold about the message. I mean, because there wasn't really a, you know trying to be a scene or fit into a scene. They were just basically they were evangelists that happened to play heavy metal and and uh, yeah, and they were reaching out to some kids. How do I know this? Because I was one of them. <laughs> Anyway, um, I strongly encourage you to, you know, maybe look up some some songs online. You know, maybe someone posted some Sacred Warrior songs, and you know, give them a listen. You know, give it a chance. And uh, okay, thanks for watching Joe's Record Store, and that's enough for the legendary Sacred Warrior. Rock on, stay metal.